everybody, and welcome to Bill and Frank Eat Pop Culture. The Bill and Frank Eat Pop Culture Podcast, available today on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and at the website Bagged, Boarded, and Boxed.com. The entire commode shifts. I feel like you leave the log. I wiped, I cleaned up, I left it. Two completely unqualified, self-proclaimed experts discuss television. Varys drops his robe and he's got this huge d- He's really been playing the Game of Thrones. Movies. James Cameron is a douchebag. <laughs> Comics. Mystique can grow airplane wings. What? <laughs> well, she's a shapeshifter. And professional wrestling. This is not a wrestling podcast. Lashley is just a dial tone. Like, who cares? A <laughs> dial tone. <laughs> Already many great episodes for you to binge listen to. Go catch up now. Bill and Frank, eat pop culture. Go listen, download, and subscribe today. I am wearing pants, but no underwear. Hi, everyone. As we mentioned last week, me and Fran are at Tramlines Festival in Sheffield this week. So, no new episode. However, I've uh, been very nice to you, and I've cobbled together all of our celebrity interview tapes and put them all together in one nice neat little package so here we are enjoy i went over to america as i often do i did to go hang out with my (laughs) my best friend jennifer lawrence was guest hosting the jimmy kimmel show and she went pete we're best friends Let's introduce you to America. It's about time you broke it over that. Wow, been... she's very generous. I know, Normally she's, she's like, not that generous, Pete, is she? She's like, Pete, you're too good a talent to be just performing above a pub in Birmingham. You need to be out here in LA, wowing the crowds, being in movies. And she said, right, come on, Jimmy Kimmel. So let's, right. let's listen to me being interviewed by Jennifer Lawrence on Jimmy Kimmel. Let's do this. I have been obsessed with our first guest for over a decade in a very, very healthy way. Oh, thanks. That's that's quite surprising, really. But I've been obsessed with you for a really long time, but can you remember the first time we met? Yeah, actually I can. Uh, it, It was after I saw you in the park that time and you had to identify me in court. And then we realized it was all a misunderstanding. And that you'd got me confused with Harvey Weinstein because he looks a bit like me naked. So you apologised and we went out for tapas. And then we went to Ikea because I needed a new cupboard for my mum's house. And I remember getting naked in your mum's closet and ordering you to dress me. Yeah, yeah, that that was weird. Uh, Because I only had like a handful of women's clothes in my satchel at that time anyway. I get very aggressive when I'm drunk. It's true. Yeah, you made me dress up like a Bavarian shepherd. And then you went into the cafe in Ikea and you were yelling, Fuck Sweden! Germany rules! Why won't David Lynch cast me? And you, you like, threw meatballs at the staff until you threw up. Wait, what do I... Okay, I made you something, but I don't know if we have enough time. What should I do? Oh, we've got time. What is it? Aww. Aw, that's really nice of you. It's all pictures of you from the set of X-Men. Look, here's you in first class. Look how happy you look there. And then there's you in days, days of future past. Uh, so you look a bit grumpy in that one. Oh, and here's you in Apocalypse. Oh, Christ, you, know, you look furious. Oh, and here's the one from Dark Phoenix. And after your death scene. And there's that smile back. Oh, very funny stuff. I know. Remember that time you thought I'd shown you my knob? It was a dildo. Yeah, I, I keep that in my pants in case I get raped. <laughs> I didn't notice because it was so white. (laughs) Well, it's not like I can take it out when I'm sunbathing, is it? So, to move on from dildos, uh, which I don't want to do... Well, actually, this is a total side note, but what do you think about Selena getting back together with Justin? I couldn't think of anything I give less of a fuck about. What is the most incorrect rumour you've ever heard of yourself? The rumour I was first man on the moon. That that was Ryan Gosling, not me. If you were going to kill a kid, what kid would it be? I'd go back in time and kill Justin Bieber. This is the second time I've tried to attack children tonight. You can't blame yourself for that one you hit with your car. I just think it's sexy. Each to their own, I suppose. Um, I'd I'd better go. It's a great interview, J-Law. Woo! (laughs) 
well, that was the interview with <laughs> that Jennifer was, Lawrence. Uh, very funny. Well, I'm glad you thought so. So I'm about to take America by storm. So yeah. Well, I'm. I, there's no holding you back, dear. No. Okay. Off, so. Uh, obviously, Star Wars trailer came out this week, so very exciting time. And they had the Star Wars celebration in some American city that I flew to. And because Samuel L. Jackson usually <laughs> appears at these events, he does. I thought I'll pin him down and I'll, I'll get an interview with him. So uh, let's have a little, little listen to that, shall we? Yes. Yeah. Let me just uh, find that on the magic of this computer system that I have here. <laughs> oh, look! Here's the button. It's lovely to meet you, Sam. Thanks for agreeing to have a quick chat with me here at the Star Wars Celebration. Thank you. Always good to be here. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I've not, not actually spoken to you before. Uh, anyway, do you think Quentin Tarantino was the mastermind behind 9-11? I guess Quentin could have done it. Oh, I'm pretty sure he did. Um, it, it recently emerged you'd never heard of Harry Potter. Uh, what have you done to rectify this? I had to read two novels to find out who this guy was. I would have thought one would have been enough, but they are quite Moorish, I suppose. Um, you're here at the Star Wars convention today. That there's no sign of George Lucas, uh, which is in no way related to claims I've murdered him. Uh, what did you, What did you think of him? He's a guy who's been running scams all of his life. Uh, exactly. My, my thoughts exactly. Charming, but <laughs> yes. he's so deadly and conniving, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what the hell? Uh, um, how have you been getting on with your personal goal of capturing a leprechaun? They're legendary and, and they're all very crafty. How do you overcome that craftiness? I consider myself crafty also. Well, you'd have to be. Yeah, you'd have to be. Um, so we're watching Snakes on a Plane in our next episode. How did that movie come about? I read the script a couple of years ago and, um... I liked it, but at that time, I guess I wasn't a big enough name to get it done, and the script was being shopped around, and Danny Glover got it, and he wanted to do it, but he also wanted to direct it. Is it a movie you're proud of? Uh, if so, why? It's a, a wonderful little story that, that crosses cultures in a whole lot of ways. I mean, a lot of people understand this film, uh, and they love it visually, they love the story. And the people in it are, are people that we all know from somewhere in our lives. So Sam Jackson, a big fan of your work. Can't wait to see you in Avengers Endgame. Thank you for joining us today. That's, that's all we've got time for. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was the interview with Samuel L. Jackson there. That was very interesting. It was. Um, who knew he was looking for leprechauns? I did not know that. And he's a man of means. While you were out the other day, uh, Robert Downey Jr. came. Did he? To talk he to knocked me. on our front door. Yeah, well, I'd invited <laughs> him. I never expected him to come. All oh, right. We had a brief chat before you got back, so you missed him. So, what? I know. All these famous people I've met in the last few well, weeks. Well, Thor wasn't there, so it's all right. It wasn't Chris Hemsworth, but no. yeah, Robert Downey Jr. was here. So. Uh, yeah, let's... He's a bit old for me anyway, to be honest. Well, if you say so. I still yeah. think he's handsome. Okay. But uh, let's let's play the interview, shall we? Yes. Okay. So, Robert, thanks for joining us. Um, I've got multiple questions. Uh, of course, you're probably one of my favourite actors uh, in one of my... Well, in, in my favourite cinematic universe. Uh, so, firstly... Uh, you've recently succeeded in completing a Rubik's Cube that you started in 1981. Uh, congratulations on that. Is that a big achievement for you? So, uh, you know, I'm glad it's worked out this way because we have been really working our asses off for a while. Sure, sure, totally. Um, Samuel L. Jackson recently told me uh, that he's undertaken a quest to capture a leprechaun. Do you believe in leprechauns? These things come from somewhere else, and then they're kind of bestowed on humanity. Are you going to help him with his quest to, to capture one? I mean, nobody had even heard of that five, six years ago. So um, I think it's interesting to be at the beginning of something. How do you feel if, if someone just like gives you a piece of cake unexpectedly? I feel grateful. Do you love popcorn? Why, I love movies. 
There's a, a rumour going round that there's a secret society in Hollywood for people with great hair. Uh, are you involved in that in any way? I'm not only the hair club president, but I'm also a member. All right, cool. Um, what do you think people said on January the 1st, 1970? Um, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a decade of signs and wonders. How do you finish making a sandwich? And you go try to put your your secret sauce on that. Thanks, uh, Robert. Yeah, secret sauce. Um, so yeah. F anyway, it's been great speaking to you. I know you've got to get off. Thank you so much for all your work in the Marvel universe. Uh, you've been incredible throughout. Should we kiss now? Yeah. You, yeah. Well, that was, that was very interesting. It was nice that he, he kissed me at yeah. the end. Don't you agree? Uh, I have lots. We also saw Rocket Man this week. We did. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to hunt down Elton John and have a little word with him about things. Oh my things. God, you've got Elton John. So I invited him around for a crumpet. Oh, okay. And he came around. He came around for crumpets. He, we had crumpets. Is and that tea. why all the crumpets? All went? the crumpets disappeared. He also he was the one that drank all the diet coke and wine in the fridge. Yes, I can yeah. imagine. He but thought, he's teetotal. Damn it! <laughs> I've been caught out. <laughs> David Furnish had some. Oh, but David Furnish is teetotal too. Isn't he? How do you know that? Well, I just know that. <laughs> <laughs> David Furnish drank all my wine. Okay, so yeah, here's that interview with Elton. Let's play that now. Well, Elton, thanks for coming in. Uh, we're really excited about Rocket Man and uh, all the uh, other things you've got going on. Um, so just a few questions. Have you uh, always played the piano with your hands? Um, not initially, because I started playing by ear when I was about three. Uh, I've got here, you once got a really bad case of diarrhoea from a brand of cake called Success. How did, how did that come about? When I got my first slice of Success... Oh, hell let loose, really. Would you ever try to scare a goose? Never say boo to a goose. There's a rumour that the hit ITV police drama The Bill is going to come back to our screens. Are you looking forward to seeing the character of Reg Hollis again? 20 years of Reg is quite enough. So your Princess Diana tribute, Candle in the Wind, uh, was an amazing success. What did the Duke of Edinburgh have to say to you about it? Um, and he said, for Christ's sake, don't write any more songs. Oh, what a... Rude man. I mean, you're a songwriting machine. I'm not electrical by any means. I'm no, uh, I didn't mean like, like an actual machine. Anyway, uh, you were only briefly at the BBC Proms this year. Uh, do you plan to stay briefly every year? Land of hope and glory and I'm off. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, Alton. It's been enlightening. Um, and hopefully we'll speak to you again in the future. Goodbye. No. Oh. Well. That was enlightening. I feel like we learnt a lot from Elton there. It doesn't sound like him, does it? Oh, well, it is him. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's definitely not someone doing a voice. Right. Yeah, so I thought I'd go and have a chat with Brad Pitt. Oh, yes. Yeah, so well, luckily he was in town. How old is he now? Old. No, he's not. Old and frail. Well, how, it's, like he a, must be like 60. I don't know. Is he like Don't ask him. It's rude to ask someone their age. Anyway, let's uh, let's hear that interview. Okay. Brad Pitt. Wow. One of the biggest stars uh, we've talked to so far on the podcast. So the trailer for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is hit, and the film looks amazing. Thanks for taking the time to speak to me on the on the podcast here. Um, it's just amazing to have you here. It's my pleasure. So before we talk about the film, uh, let's scotch some rumours. I heard that you shot Gary Oldman by accident when you're out hunting for poor people on your estate. Like, Gary Oldman takes a bullet better than anyone you've ever seen. So, has your mum seen this new film? Because, you know, it's quite sort of risque, a lot of sex, a lot of violence. What did she say when she saw, like, a, a rough cut of the film? She goes, have you ever thought about acting classes? Well, that's, that's quite rude. Um, I mean, she must be proud of you. You're a really good actor. Um, and you're very handsome man as well if you don't mind me saying is it okay if we discuss your sex life <sighs> do you ever cry after sex I'll tear up every now and then but not much for crying 
What's your masturbation setup? When was the last time you had a wank? I was stuck in this hotel room with no windows, oddly enough, and uh, uh, just doing what you do. W was your wife okay with you just like, hiring a hotel room just to masturbate in? You know, was she upset? Not that I recall. No, not that I recall, oddly enough. I think she was fine with it. You've adopted a lot of kids. Is that because you've never had sex with Angelina Jolie? Because she can only be sexually turned on by her own reflection? Never happened, to my recollection. So you've never, you've never slept together. That's amazing. Can I take a naked photo of you for my wife? Uh, no, I think that would be inappropriate. All right, okay, uh, let's move on. Can you help me solve this riddle? Because you're a smart guy. So the riddle is, there was a man who was born before his father, killed his mother, and married his sister. Yet there was nothing wrong with what he had done. Why? Huh. Yes, I, I, I understand the conundrum of it all. Yeah, it's a puzzler, isn't it? I thought you could help. Obviously not. <laughs> that, that riddle just sounds like something that would happen to the average Trump voting family. <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck? Oh, come on. There's no way that offended you. Even if it did, was that any reason to throw my goldfish bowl on the floor? Don't recall doing that. You did, though, you cruel bastard. Look, it's all over the floor. Poor little Goldie's dead. I won him at a fair like 10 years ago. He survived ages. And he's changed colour a few times too. Fran says he's magic. Now he's dead. Why would, you, why would you throw his bowl on the floor like that? What did he ever do to you? I thought it was a bowling ball. Well, it, it's not a bowling ball, so get fucked. Go on, get out of my ass. Well, that was the interview with Brad. As I said, it didn't go very well. No. And Where is Goldie? Goldie is in heaven. Fish heaven. All right. I went to play golf with Morgan Freeman. Oh, America. right. That's interesting. Yeah. Does he even like golf? He loves it, as I found out to my cost, as we're about to hear. He's also a bit of a, a sarcastic sod. Oh. Anyway, let's, let, I recorded our conversation as we went round. Okay, so how thought, many holes did you play? Well, we wanted to play 18, but we didn't get through the whole game. Right. But, um, let, let's hear that now. Okay. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Right in the fucking lake. Anyway, Morgan Freeman. Nice to be out golfing with you. So, obviously, I'm looking to, to break into the industry, of course, um, like many others. What advice would you give someone like me? Learn the script, primarily. Oh, nice hit. So, you turned down a role in the original series of Star Trek, and uh, there were rumours that you did this because William Shatner is a racist. Was that the case? I have my thoughts about it. I don't think um, William knew any black people. Ah, oh, shitting cocks, not fuckberries. Ah, oh, fuck this game. Right in the fucking bush. Anyway, what do you make of the heightened tensions in North Korea at the moment? Now I'm on the downside, I think, of um, thinking about Korea. I'm more thinking about playing golf. Oh, Matt, right on the green. You're brilliant at this. Do, do you like golf? I think of golf as really the game of life. Uh, life is something that you continually try to improve. Oh, f fucking hell. That one went behind me. How's that even possible? I agree, man. I mean, golf is like life. It's shit frustrating and you can play it until you're bloody dead. You don't have anybody to blame for your mistakes, but you. Ah, oh, fucking nettles. Where's that fucking ball? Look, look, nobody likes a smart ass, yeah, Morgan. What did you make of Dennis Rodman breaking his cock during sex? 
Uh, and he went at it so hard that he damaged himself. Jesus Christ! Only went like a foot in front of me. How are you so good at this bloody game? Yeah, you, I think you admire what you will never be able to do. Oh, look, you're starting to get on my tits, mate. This game is shit. Only old people have got time for any of this bullshit. We still have people excelling. They're still coming up out of you don't know where, excelling. <clears throat> that means they worked at it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Fucking golf Buddha. Oh, for fuck's sake! Another foot forward! Have you, have you just teed off on the second hole? I've not finished the first one yet. Well, you lose based on your choices. Yeah, fucking smug old fucker. Anyway, how do you think people are going to remember you, besides being really annoying to play golf with? Very generous, very rich. Yeah, really humble as well. Finally! How's that, you fucker? Right on the green. Will you wait for me? I'm nearly done with the first hole. Do you know when you go in and do these movies, and I'm going to do two or three scenes, and then I'm going to go home. Yeah, all right, all right. I'm done now, I'm coming. Look, this isn't one of your movies. What do you do all day when you're not acting? You just play this shit. Get up. Uh, I make coffee. I take about an hour to drink the coffee. Takes you about an hour to finish a sentence as well. Oh, for in the fucking bushes again! What, what else do you do? Just golf, I imagine. Judging by this day. And I'll either do one or the other. Usually I'll do the daily New York Times crossway puzzle because I have it on my iPad. What, what that's it? I mean, that, what's a typical afternoon, man? A sandwich. And then I'll go and play golf. I knew it. Look, this isn't fair. But I haven't got time to be playing golf and eating sandwiches like you. But you, you should have just said you were this good. And why are you always so fucking relaxed? I get to go everywhere and talk to people who think deep. Oh, where's that fucking ball? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not a deep thinker. Yeah, like, golf just brings out the worst in me. I think we're going to have to call it a day, uh, Mr. Freeman. I only brought one ball and it's gone. Thanks for coming out, anyway. What an experience. Oh, fuck off. Well, uh... That was that was me and Morgan Freeman playing well, golf. Well, I I'm glad to say that that is how you normally play golf. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know why. I mean, I just think I just got excited because it was Morgan Freeman. I was like, yeah, all right, let's play golf. Even though uh, golf. You hate golf, I, really. I do. I think deep down, I'm just not good <laughs> You're at not it. Very good at it. No. I nearly beat you once. Yeah. And I've never played before. It kind of ruined my interview with Morgan because oh, I'm a big fan of his. Yeah. Uh, guy. Yeah. I just got frustrated with him, but he was, you know, he was a bit smug about it. Yeah. Well, I've had a very productive week, as always. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it was 4th of July, wasn't it? So I definitely had to go yes. to America and visit some of my celebrity friends. Oh. And uh, this week, I thought we'd celebrate the 4th of July, but I took Julia Roberts out to play bowling with me. Where's my 4th of July You were busy going making out. Batman cakes. And working nights. Yeah, and you had stuff on. So I thought, you know, I'll just do my usual week. So, as always, recorded I my conversation. I wanted to go out with Julia Roberts. And next time I go out with Julia. She's so lovely. She's a lovely woman and she's a dear, dear friend. I was worried you are going to, like, like nerd, it, nerd up the joint. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway you, get, anyway, you get the fun part. You get to listen to me talk to Julia at the bowling alley. Okay. So, uh, let's hear that now. All right. Julia, so good to see you here at the bowling alley. We're going to have a lot of fun together. It's it's just yeah I can't believe it 
Can't believe I'm talking to you, Julia Roberts. Uh, not seen you in a long time. This is amazing. Hey, I'm so happy to see you. Likewise, likewise. Oh, man. Oh, it's nice to be bowling again. I haven't done it in ages. And, uh, yeah, I know, I know it's one of the few things in life that, that you actually enjoy. This, to me, made my Saturday. Oh, thanks. That's really nice of you. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's ask some questions for the listeners. So, how important do you think gravity is? It should always be important all the time to everybody. I could not agree more. I think that's, that's a really insightful comment. Right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, do you back uh, President Trump's recent call for a tax on gravity, uh, which would pay for his, his space force? But let's not talk about politics. Sure, sure, yeah, it's the weekend. So, come on, what's it like being you? I mean, what's the first thing you say when you look in the mirror every morning? Okay, first of all, can you believe the size of my face? I... Yeah, I mean, it's kind of pronounced, but I don't don't think it's overly large. It's like a little china plate. <laughs> oh, right, okay, yeah, you're fucking with me. Um, so you've had a little work done, of course. I mean, how much of that, that famous face can you credit to your surgeon, uh, Dr. Jeff Jeffinson III of Jefftown, Illinois? I give him a lot of credit. Not that I am a different person, but that he has helped me protect my person and keep my person where I want to be. I mean, okay, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, anyway, I, I mean, I feel like we've only skated over size issues, if you will, and the issue of your, your slightly moon face. Um, your children are all giants, am I right? I mean, aren't they all over 12 feet tall? Almost. Henry is 11. Wow. I mean, so what, what's that like? Um, what's it like trying to raise three giants like that? It's interesting because it's all so new. The opportunities, the, the pressures, the resources, the having the whole world in your hand like that. So, as a mother of giants, are you a bit perturbed by President Trump's plans to build a big giant-proof wall across the Mexican border? I mean, surely giants are no threat to the US while your sons are alive. Yes, I mean, I think I don't really understand what they need that for right now. I agree. I totally. Um, anyway, it was amazing to speak to you, Julia, as ever. I know you're a very busy woman. Good luck with the Giants, and long may they protect your fine country for a, as, as many more 4th of Julys as we can enjoy. I am so happy to see you. <laughs> well, that was me talking to Julia. Very yeah. En very enlightening. Yeah, she seems a very nice person. She, she's a lot of fun, yeah. Um, I must admit, I agree with her concerns about like the Giants. My it's friend, good. my good close friend Owen Wilson. Oh yeah. He contacted me via a Dropbox that we keep in Hollywood, under a dog bowl. Oh right, yeah. Near uh, near Robert. Is that a dial telephone or one of those ones you have to wind round? No, no. So it's a, he, he, he leaves a signal for me under uh, Robert Duval's dog bowl. Oh okay. And if the dog bowl's turned up one way, I know Owen Wilson has a message for me. Oh, okay. And I have to go to a quarry in San Bernardino. <laughs> and then he leaves me a message that tells me where to meet him, uh, which is usually a Walmart car park in uh, somewhere in Beverly Hills. So I had to go meet Why him. Why Walmart? Because no one would think to look for Owen Wilson in a Walmart. No, I suppose no. not. He's more a Morrison's chap, isn't he? Yes, if they had Morrison's and... Yeah, you know, he'd be a Whole Foods kind of guy, I think. Oh, right, yeah, he's yeah. Quite, he's quite wealthy. Yeah. So yeah, I had to go meet Owen, and um, well, for for the podcast, I'll record the conversation that we had. So let's hear that now. Psst, Owen, Owen, is that you? Why the 
Why the secret meeting? Risk, uh... Risk, uh? What risks are you taking? You know, tarnishing the brand. Right, okay. I mean, you, you said you had information about the ambassador scandal. You, you said you, you had information about, about Trump's giant proof fence program. That he's all in favor of it. So is, is he gonna build that wall? And then all of a sudden he is not doing that. Why? Well, why all of a sudden? Are you worried about his welfare? They're beating him. Who? Who's beating him? Julie, Julie Roberts' giant sons? How's he gonna get out of this? Some new training methods and dig deep and see if he still has what it takes to be a champion. Who does he need to beat? The big nemesis is Jackson Storm. It's not a meteorologist. Who's Jackson Storm? He is one of these young guns that is trying to take the title from our beloved. So, so you, you don't think Julie Roberts' army of giant sons can protect America from giants anymore? You know, her ideas and techniques can work. But, but do you like her? Oh, I love her. She's wonderful. Learn about her personal history. Why are you doing this for Trump, Owen? He's a dick. What, are you in, in love with him? It was fun for us to kind of get to know each other and develop a, um, a relationship. I think it went great. Oh, you bum that guy. What do you like about him so much? The drive to win, and um, I just think that he sort of exists in this uh, world that, uh, that people like to visit. Well, you're not going to convince me to switch sides. The only way to protect the U.S. from giants is to have your own army of giants. You're a traitor, Wilson. And now, you must die. <coughs> well, uh, that was how it went with Owen. Exciting. You killed another celebrity. <laughs> I have, of course, been very busy, as I like to be while you're away. Yes, you do. Um, so as you know, since the podcast has been growing in popularity, I've been having my high-powered meetings with people in Hollywood. And it was an exciting me week for me this week, because I got to meet George Lucas. It's oh very my gosh. exciting, isn't it? <laughs> so anyway, George had heard me saying all these nice things about Star Wars, so he's like, come to Skywalker Ranch and we'll, we'll hang out. So that sounded like the most exciting thing that's ever happened. So I hopped on a plane and I went over to America to go and visit him. All in um, this one week? All in this one. And that's not all. There's other stuff <laughs> I've done which we'll get to shortly. So George comes and meets me at the gate and he's, he's like dressed like he normally is, you know, like, yeah. like someone who wanks in car parks. And uh, he takes me all around his house, show me all his Star Wars stuff. He's got a little R2-D2 that follows him around, bleeping and things. I want one of them. It'd be good, wouldn't it? I'd like yeah. a little BB-8 that followed me around. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And we had a little lightsaber fight and stuff, and it was great. And then after that, I said, George, George, I need to interview you for the podcast. And he was all like, yeah, of course, in his little George Lucas voice. So uh, so here's that interview. So I'll just play that for you. Uh, so, George, I've, I've been a huge fan of your work for, for many years. Uh, it's a huge honor for me to talk to you. We've, we've had a really fun day today. You've told me some pretty su surprising things about yourself. Uh, we'll discuss them later. Thank you for being so candid in your responses. Uh, so firstly, since your last film, uh, Red Tails, I believe, was quite poorly received and you since uh, sold the rights to Star Wars, what have you been up to? Trying to stay alive. Oh, uh, has, uh, has surviving been difficult? I mean, aren't you a billionaire? No matter how easy it looks on the outside, um, it is a very, very difficult struggle. A struggle financially? Struggle through the whole process of, of... Of of what? Taking a shit? There's a lot of times when you sit and you say, why am I doing this? I'll never make it. It'll just not, it's not going to happen. It's just... What? Well, really, you, you struggle with constipation. It's much more difficult than one might think. So I can imagine it, it's hard, but surely there's a, like a medical solution that someone of your means could obtain quite easily. I was in an accident that 
in theory, no one could survive. Wow. So, so that brought about your your chronic constipation. So oh, I take it from that answer that there is no medical solution to your problem, and that must have been hard to deal with at first. That was a very dark period for me. I've no doubt. I've no doubt. So, so how did you come through this problem? Uh, what did you do? Um, uh, things. What things specifically? I mean, when I'm when I'm bunged up, sometimes I'll just like drink a Red Bull and a whole pot of coffee, sit down on a toilet with a magazine, and, and just wait for the inevitable. I mean, did you take a, a similar approach? Suddenly clicked in and started working, which was a great relief to me because for up to that point, I was feeling very desperate about the whole situation. I made a pact. A pact. A pact. What? Just to sit it out. So I did it as uh, sort of self-preservation. I said I'm going to finish this, as painful as it is. Well, yeah, it would be. Um, so how was the eventual movement? I mean, well, not not to put too fine a point on it. How was the shit? Fortunately, it wasn't. It was huge, but it wasn't so huge. And it came so slowly that I was able to assimilate it a little bit. <clears throat> well, th- thanks for sharing that with me. Um, I know it's probably quite traumatic to talk about. Uh, did you manage to speak to your loved ones about this issue? In the beginning, it wasn't something anybody was interested in. People can be quite dismissive of things that, that don't personally affect them. Um, what did people say when you told them you'd not like pooped for months and months? And what did Spielberg say when you told him? Boy, when that one hits, you're really going to be thrown for a loop. Was he right? Did it, did it affect you mentally? Psychologically, it's a very, very difficult thing to cope with. And um, you really need time after an event like that in your life, especially if it comes very fast. I think um, I think you will be pushed to the brink of hopelessness before you come through the other side. Before we move on, George, um, what's your toilet set up? I mean, I've mentioned my, my magazine coffee routine. When you finally cleared your blockage, did you use a specific toilet in your house? Um, I mean, what was going on? Door was absolutely locked, and there was a very, very high wall, and nobody got in. Well, that that was probably for the best. Uh, what did your wife make of all this? I didn't care. Oh, all right, okay. Um, well, I, I suppose because your marriage broke down, um, was this solely down to your constipation, or was this because of sexual issues? There's nothing worse than the frustration of having somebody who you feel doesn't get what you're doing. I mean, I could imagine. Um, what sort of thing would she say to you in bed? Well, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? I don't like that. Don't don't put that in there. Oh, I see, I see. Um, I heard on another podcast that it was because she wouldn't let you have a peanut butter and jam on your toast. Uh, and usually those two things go together. Exactly, exactly. Um, I can see why that would lead to wider problems. Um, so you left your wife and you moved into a hotel. That must have been nice. So i got to make the most of it. And then the next day is I began in two extra days. So you stayed in that the hotel a long time. Um, what did you think while living there? Well, I'm here, and every day now is an extra day. I mean, that, George, that, that's quite a literal interpretation of what staying in a hotel is. Uh, were you getting some sort of reward scheme, bonus or something? What happened if, for example, you, you booked a two-week stay? I've been given an extra day. Oh, that sounds really nice, really nice, yeah. Um, when you were a younger man, like say your late teens, early 20s, did you see your life panning out this way? Uh, what did a young George Lucas like to do with his life? Uh, before, when I was in high school, I just sort of wandered around. All oh, right, you just, just wandered around. Um, did you wander anywhere in particular? Cisco, and everybody said, why are you going to San Francisco? I said, that's where I live, and... You walk to San Francisco? What, what, from here? And here I'm only 20, or 27. Oh, right, okay. Uh, my God, I thought you'd walked across California for a minute. So, uh, before we talk a little more about your film career, let's, let's keep talking about George Lucas, the man. So, uh, after your divorce, uh, did you seek to get back into the dating world? Did you go after any women... Uh, what's your seduction technique? Banging on doors, trying to get people to give me a chance. Uh, 
is it ever successful? Here you spent your whole life just begging and, you know, using every means at your disposal to get one person or two people to say yes to your... And then suddenly everybody says yes. Suddenly everybody wants you to do everything and anything you want. And uh, it's then you have to start learning how to say no. I see. So, so you were sexually promiscuous then. I'd heard rumours like that you've been sleeping with a lot of Lucasfilm employees. Um, was that ever problematic? You start doing them all, uh, your life gets very unfocused, uh, you get overwhelmed, and you collapse, basically. Okay, so um, it's quite well known in some circles that you would paid Hayden Christensen, who played Anakin in the prequels, uh, that, you, that you'd paid him for sex once. Um, it was apparent... Uh, he, this was after it was apparent he'd never work again pretty much thanks to you how did that come about um, so I called him up on the phone from London and I said do you want to do this and he said okay and I said what am I going to do I'm in Europe and I'm not going to be back for like three months and I want to get this thing off the ground I made a deal with him for the whole money because there wasn't very much it was so tiny that he could only get him to do it for the whole amount of money that's, uh, that's a pretty grim story uh, lost lost a bit of respect for you after hearing that um how do you how do you get a film made these days you talk real fast and you convince somebody that you should be doing a feature so you just sort of confuse them into letting you make a film um, do, you, do you think then that the fact that you've not properly written or prepared any of your films before making them since probably return of the jedi has led to the critics turning on you and critics have a tendency to, that's all they focus on, which is I like it, I don't like it. It's good, it's bad. Uh, and it doesn't work that way. And so you really have to not deal with that part of what happens. It's the same thing uh, with the the audience. Uh, you know, I've made some movies that have, you know, 10 people have gone seen. Nobody wanted to go see the movie. Uh, and some films that the people that went and saw them didn't like it. Uh, probably, the, you know, maybe a half a dozen, a dozen of us actually like the movies. That's the Phantom Menace you're talking about, isn't it? George! George! It's over, George. I have the moral high ground. You want to estimate my power? Don't try it. <laughs> you were the chosen one. It said that you'd bring balance to the franchise, not sell it to Disney. I hate you. You were our father, George. We loved you. So uh, that was the George Lucas interview. You can see it at the end of the 